Hey everyone and welcome to another video and guys I get a lot of questions around what differentiates between a gold victor, a platinum victor, diamond master, grandmaster, challenger, etc. I get this question all the time and you know I've had enough. I've done hundreds, literally hundreds of victor reviews, probably 250 at minimum over the past two years and I played Victor for many, many, many years. And you know, I was like, okay, I'll just make a video. I'm just gonna make a video literally breaking down the skills, the concepts that these differing Victor players understand and have within their arsenal, some of the mistakes and common errors I see at the differing rank breakpoints. So hopefully by the end of this video, you can, you're gonna have some sense of what to focus on next or what thing to maybe even remove from your play um, in order to, to make it to that next rank. So I tried to make it as practical as possible. This actually was a video that was hard to make. It took me quite a long time. So hopefully you get some value from it. Let's dive straight in. So we'll kick it off with Victor level one. Victor basics, unranked to gold four for all your iron, bronze, silver gamers. First one being basic E tethering and learning how to actually move your character while casting your E. This is something I went pretty deep on within my old Victor guide. This is a drill that I recommend a lot of people to do. Get a dummy in the river um, and kind of move to side to side, really gaining that confidence in how to move and cast that E. The next one being timing E's with enemy last hits. When the enemy walks up and they go for a last hit, I'll quickly replay this one here. Um, you know, you walk up, you posture aggressively, and you're able to time that E nicely with the enemy last hit. Nothing too fancy. An absolute fundamental for Victor players. Next one here, not using Q on the wave all the time. This is a very common mistake. Even I saw in low goal players, they were doing something like this. They will just use their Q on the wave exactly like this in front of the enemy, and it would lead to lowering lane pressure. You're not playing in accordance to your lane bully identity. Um, leading to missed opportunities, and sometimes the enemy just gets to get, get, get gets away with a free lane, and then before you know it, you get all in, or you get ganked, and you can't contest. This is something that, remember, I tie everything back to Victor's identity being a lane bully. Hence why gaining comfortability while moving and casting E, very, very important. Uh, being able to time your E's with last hits, very, very important. This is all tying into that underlying identity, what I really believe Victor to be. Um, that lane bully. You see it all the time. These are two differing examples. Uh, very important. Using W to pull and hold waves. You know, this is something that I thought was going to go into Victor level two, but I really do think it's a Victor fundamental. Um, you need to know how to do it, even if you're not getting max value from it. I think it's a very important skill that can create nice wave states. It can allow you to get better resets, punish the enemy when they're low on resources, etc. Next one here being using R aggressive, aggressively for lane control. This is... You know, not overly important. It's something that's very nice though. I see a lot of Victor players in the lower ELO brackets hold onto their R for an extremely long period of time because they're thinking, well, if I can't kill them, then there's no point using it. No, but use it for lane control. Victor's not about solo kills. Victor's about poking out your enemy, small wins, gradually gaining an edge, creating a CS lead, an XP lead, sending them back to base. That's what it's all about. So just use it, drop it on the head. Don't, if you feel like you're not gonna get much value from it in a 2v2, um, just drop it on the head exactly like that. You know, and at a basic level, understanding how to play in accordance to your key spikes. You know, Lost Chapter Spike, big. Mythic Spike, big. Tier two boots, your E upgrade. These are all massive significant spikes for Victor. And especially when you're climbing all the way to gold four, you want to really be focused on hitting these spikes. And I'll say the big one obviously being Lost Chapter, but the, the most important one, the uh, upgraded E. And that's where Victor really comes online. You get more lane control, etc. So it doesn't need to be super sophisticated. And guys, most of this stuff is in with inside of my old Victor guide. This is all about Victor fundamentals. So if you know if you find yourself in this bracket, or even to be honest, your low gold, a lot of that stuff is gonna be reiterated there. So moving on to Victor level two. This is combining the basics with fundamentals, right? Two things together. The Victor basics that we covered just before with mid lane fundamentals. I believe this does and will get you from gold four to platinum two. Now, across all my time coaching and doing a lot, a lot of sessions, I realized that Goal 4 to Plat 2 was less about learning a bunch of new concepts. It was more about developing muscle memory, developing a very good feel for the game, and really working on your execution, right? People overcomplicate this climb by trying to learn all these new fancy concepts. No, you need to, like I said here, 90% of the struggle is simply not dying to ganks and balancing good fundamentals with great E accuracy and E tethering. So tying back to the initial drill that I did on the first one, being able to move your character, time your E with last hits, 
um, that sort of stuff while not dying to ganks. That's a massive part of the gold two to sorry gold four to platinum two journey, and a lot of people really struggle to internalize that uh, that lesson. And and you know this is another example: not losing lane control due to getting ganked. Again, preventing yourself from dying to ganks. Remember, Victor's identity is that of a lane bully. And if you're not being a lane bully and you're not really putting yourself in position to get those small wins, get that edge, slow build waves into the enemy, poke them down with ease, whittle them down, etc., and you have to burn your flash or die, it's very difficult to kind of, I guess, fulfill uh, Victor's identity as a lane bully. So this is a very common mistake. You know, they get ganked, they die, they waste flash, whatever. And this is something I see all the time. And the reason they're not climbing isn't because of some sophisticated mid-game mistake. It's because they're literally dying to ganks. And that's 90% of the struggle here, guys. Another one here, understanding how to manage waves while trading. You know, you don't need to have super sophisticated wave management, but what you do need is, you know, have a feel. What feels good for you? Some matchups is going to be really easy to do. Other matchups, it's, it's going to be a little bit harder. Um, but, you know, balancing trading... Um, while managing waves like I'm doing here, trying to keep the wave on my side is something that some people struggle a lot with. And again, it, it ties more down to the execution and the muscle memory rather than learning new concepts. Another another very important one here is learning how to get, sorry, learning how to um, think in advance about your gold and resources, right? So say we're nearing 1300 gold or we're, 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 we've run out of sea pots, etc. We need to be thinking in advance, okay, how do we get a great reset? Do I have to alt this wave? Do I have to base on that next cannon wave? How am I going to get a good quality reset? Because remember, tying everything back to Victor's identity or uh, as a lane bully, you cannot stay in lane with low resources. If you stay... If you overstay in lane with low resources, you're going to get burnt, right? You're going to you're going to die to ganks. You're not going to be able to poke the enemy down. You're going to give the enemy free farm, and it can lead to bad wave states. You can get behind an XP because you can't get a good reset, etc. And there's a lot of matchups where you're playing you know, these mage v mage matchups, and getting lane control is absolutely essential. So like we saw here, alting the wave, coming back, TPing perfectly uh, timed with that lost chapter gold. It's excellent. Uh, really, really good quality stuff. So this is, you know... You can view this as more of like a game fundamental, but I would say this is borderline a Victor fundamental. Again, where we're really talking about here, the basics of Victor combined with the basics of the mid lane fundamentals. You know, another El Clasico fundamental here, understanding how to track, for, uh, track first jungle clear and not die to ganks and ward and lean. Very stock standard stuff here, something that people struggle with. I love this one here, knowing how to walk the tightrope and posture aggressively without dying, therefore maximizing your epoch. So here's a great example. The, the victor sees the diner's on that ledge there, but he kind of knows Kane's somewhat in the area. Notice how he's really trying to push it. He's really trying to get in range and get that extra E off onto the brand. And he knows that he can't die because Kane's in the area. He's hovering on the bottom side of the, the lane. And these are the sorts of situations that make the difference, you know, because you get that extra poke off and it adds up over time. Very important stuff. So to quickly summarize this Victor level two, you know, it's all about developing muscle memory, developing a good amount of feel for Victor, not dying to ganks, good quality resets, jungle tracking first clear, warding, leaning, threat assessment, while also creating good wave states and getting that poke down, playing it according to your champ's identity. Okay. So leading into level three, we've got uh, Victor basics. That's that first one. Number two, the fundamentals. And the third layer we're adding on here, guys, is lane matchup understanding. And I believe that if you can combine these three quite well, this can get you from platinum two all the way to diamond two. And um, so as we can see here, understanding how to approach a wide variety of matchups. And this is where most people spend the majority of their climb, at least in the Midland Academy, when I'm working with a lot of Victor players, they really sit here in that plat two to D2 bracket. Um, because they're really trying to learn all the matchups. How do I play versus high range mages? How do I play versus fast paced assassins? How do I play versus mid range champions? These are the sorts of, you know, over time you put yourself in these situations, um, you'll eventually learn them. And that's where you're going to put a lot of your time, as well as adapting to a faster game pace, more aggressive laners while keeping up with the fundamentals and not, not dying to ganks. People automatically assume that once you understand, quote unquote, the fundamentals, like I know how to jungle track and I know how to lean and ward, that as you climb, it's like you know it, therefore you never have to relearn it. That couldn't be further from the truth. If you know how to, you know, deal with platinum four junglers and platinum four laners and execute upon the fundamentals in platinum four, great thumbs up. That might get you to plat three, whatever. 
as you climb, and let's say that person climbs a D4 or, you know, P1, whatever, remember, the, everyone gets better. The, 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 the lanes are going to be played faster paced. The people, the enemies tethering and their micro is going to be better. They're going to be, they're going to have more champ mastery. The supports are going to be better. The junglers are going to be better. All of the players in the game are going to be better. So executing upon the fundamentals takes more of your mental stack and you need to bump that up to another level. So people automatically, they just, they completely disrespect the fundamentals with Victor. They just think that it's going to be some fancy complex concept that's missing out but no it's 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 not about the things you do it's the thing it's the things that you don't do so here's a perfect example right I, you know i'm dying to a creative support roam from the karma in this situation you know and it's what it is because these are better quality supports they're going to roam more effectively the jungles are going to do more creative pathing and this is the this level of muscle memory and confidence to do this in many differing matchups right you're going to play one game victor versus fizz versus a Rek'Sai jungle, the next game versus Vlad with a roaming pike. You're in all these differing situations. So you gotta just put in the reps and really understand, develop that threat assessment. How do these pathing work? How do these champions work? How do they want me to play the waves, etc. It's really developing the basic knowledge of all these situations. And you must be able to play slow games like this, right? This is a game where it's 11 minutes in and there's what, 10 kills and not, you know, mid the mid situation here very, very farm oriented, not much happening. And then you're going to be in other situations like this where, you know, it's 15 minutes into the game, 20 kills, you know, I'm six and zero. So you're going to play slow games and fast paced games. You've got to be able to adapt to differing paces within the game as well. Some people have like this strategy that they climb through plat to diamond with. It's like, okay, I like to play very slow scaling first strike, you know, gathering storm thorns ring style. But then they, they're thrown into a situation where they're versing a fast paced, other fast paced mage. The enemy goes C pot, they're versing a fast paced jungler. And then before you know it, the, the Nexus exploded at 20 minutes. You're like, what just happened? Well, you don't know how to adapt to a fast game pace. These are the sorts of things that you need to be thinking about as you're making that climb from um, P2 to D2. And you've got to be able to adapt your builds in different situations. These are two examples. You know, games where you're going to go the Crown Lichbane build. There's other games where you're going to go uh, Leandre's Cosmic Drive. I'm sure some people like the Loon and Shadow Flame, but I think that build is terrible. But that, that's just, just uh, beside the point. What's more important is that you're really thinking about how to adapt your build based off the type of game that you're within and what your role is within the game. This is a really, really important one. Ability to use lol states to identify, at, at least at a basic level, what your role is in the game. In some games, you're going to be the carry. In other games, you're not going to be the carry. I believe in this game, I'm going a Leandru's build. I thought I was going to be the carry. I'm, I'm basically sole AP. You know, top's losing. Bot's not in a good spot. I believe I had to really make it up here in the mid game. So I believe I was the carry. So I'm using these moments from resetting, coming out of base to really think about what is my role this game. And it doesn't need to be super sophisticated. It just needs to be at a very simple level. Who's strong in my team and who do I need to play around? Another one here, I think another concept that people really overcomplicate is knowing how to balance farming with uh, grouping in the mid game. And again, doesn't it need to be at a really high level, just at a basic level. This is all stemming back to lol state usage and map state awareness. The more you play Victor and you develop that muscle memory and you don't need to think about why I'm like how to cast E, what I should be doing in this matchup, how I deal with this jungler, what does that mean guys? It means that your mental stack is free to think about the game holistically. You're able to think about win conditions, your role inside the game, how you need to adapt your your positioning based off the win cons and how your team your team comp plays fights and as you do, as you build that muscle memory and you have more space in your mental stack to think you're going to be able to process more information and, and make decisions like this oh okay my team's here they don't have that much engage they don't really need me i can probably afford to get this side lane so at a very simple level when you're thinking about when to grab a side lane wave or not always bring it back to what's my teammate's location and, and what is the enemy threat level onto our team? If the enemy has a Malphite and a Camille, that's very different to them having a Shivana and, you know, a Lulu. You know, it's very, very different. So you need to, you, you really need to think about the champion specifically. There's no cookie cutter formula, okay? So moving on to Victor level four. This is now we've got the basics of Victor. We've now got the fundamentals. We've now got the matchup understanding. And this is where the sophisticated wing con assessment really comes into play. And this is where... 
This is actually the hardest gap to climb for, for, for I would say, any champ in all ranks, across all ranks, but the D, the D2 to low Grandmaster, uh, specifically D2 to Master, just there's a lot of mental blocks there, but um, this is where real, real proper wing con assessment comes into play here, and, and people can stay at this rank for a very long time. So the higher you get, it's less about Victor understanding and more about how Victor interacts with the game as a whole. You know, there's a lot of small interactions in lanes, you know, threat assessment, damage output, wing concepts, and etc. You know, for example, in this Corky match up here, there's a very big difference between Corky starting C, but you kind of see it's kind of below the text here, versus a Corky who starts a cull or a Corky that starts a longsword. Depending on their itemization and their runes, right? You know, they might go PTA versus first strike or whatever it might be, or Halo Blades versus first strike. Depending on all these small minute details, it changes how I can navigate the lane, right? And so it also depends on what jungler I have and the jungler they have. I might want to play for more prior if I believe their jungler is going to be potentially invading my jungler. There are a lot of smaller details that are more game holistic um, that influence my decision making. And again, like I always say, and it's a common thread with our, throughout this video, the basics done well is extremely overlooked and is one of the big reasons players like Chovy is so consistent. I recently had a Victor player um, join the Midland Academy and he's a, he was, I think he's sitting like GM and he kind of peaked low challenger and he was actually on my server. And I did a review with him recently and you know I was looking over his VOD, right? And I know these players and we're playing on a, at a similar rank. I'm probably like at this stage four, 500 LP higher than him. And I'm like, the difference between me and you is not micro. It's not really even our matchup understanding. It's like, you know, my mental stack is freed up. I'm not really going to make silly mistakes where I'm going to die to that random gank, whereas you are. I'm hyper aware of my teammate's location, whereas you're not. So you're going to get caught off and have to blow flash in that situation. I'm not. I'm going to reset every single time when I need to because I'm always hyper aware of my role in this game and what the next objective is and where my jungler is. You're not. It's a lot of basic concepts executed consistently that really make the difference as you're, as you're really approaching these higher elo brackets. Um, and again, like I said, these players need to be able to seamlessly adapt their build and their mindset based off the game state. Again, great example, Leandre's Cosmic Drive, Crown Lich Pain, depending on the game pace and your role within the game. They know what the highest impact move is on the map, tying back to clear reference point understanding, no confusion. They know whether or not it's worth it for them to farm to that particular item and sacrifice that skirmish or not, because they're very aware of who their wing cons are, what their role is in the game, and you know what the enemy can and can't do. There's nothing that really surprises them. They're not caught off guard. There's no confusion. Again, their mental stack is free and able to think about the game holistically. The likelihood of compensation with these players, tying back to that example before with me and my client, is very low. I very rarely compensate because I know when I play Victor exactly what I wanted every single time. I know how important it is for me to get a particular item. I know in other games where it's really not important because I'm not the wing con, other games it's extremely important. You know, these are the sorts of things that you really need to develop. Remember, this is also why champ mastery becomes more and more important as you climb the solo queue ladder. The higher you get, the more champ mastery matters. And again, an extremely overlooked concept. People automatically assume that the higher you get, you've got to have these massive pools. And like I said here, the ability to say no is equally important to the ability to say yes. I'd say even it's actually probably even more important on Victor. Um, know when to give, trade, and contest objectives. Here is an example of one of my clients in a lower elo bracket still doing a great example of calling dragon, uh, giving up dragon. He says, give Drake back, back, back. You know, ideally it's a lot more in advance, you know, a minute, a minute and a half even before the dragon. Um, but these are the sorts of calls that can literally win you a game to, to give that rift, to give that dragon. Um, it's a very under underrated skill to develop as well. That's just a, should be a fundamental in high elo. Fixing lane assignments. Here's a great example, kind of covered up by the Midland Academy logo here, but he says, calls the, coming out of base in the lol states, calling the lane assignments, telling his jungler what he wants. Kane, hover me in the side lane. You know, you guys go uh, mid, I go top. Really shot calling in advance what they want. They're, they've got that commander mindset. There is no hesitation about what they need to do. They know exactly what their role is and why they want what they want. And, and it should go without being said, but I want to put it here anyway. Team fighting and skirmish positioning is obviously refined, and this is directly tied to the increased understanding of enemy champs and role in composition, right? When people talk to me about, Curtis, how do you refine your team fighting and your skirmishing? You know, I've got videos on that on my YouTube, but it, you know, a massive part of it is 
the more you can think about the game holistically and understand how your champion interacts with other champions, naturally your team your your team fighting is gonna is gonna increase, right? So, you know, when I'm when I'm actually reviewing my own games, it's very rarely thinking about me. It's more how did that champ interact with my champion? And the more I understand about that champion, that's gonna influence my decisions in team fights and skirmishes in the future, right? So when you look at these really, really good players, when you're watching some stream and you're watching Faker or, you know, Showmaker, Trophy, whatever, you know, these players generally, they know what the enemy is going to do before they even do it. You know, they just have such a sophisticated knowledge uh, of, of what the enemy champs want to do. And they're never really caught off guard. It's all, it's all anticipation. It's never really reaction. Um, and the small intricacies and your understanding of what the enemy can do to you maximize your damage output because you don't need to be scared in certain situations because um, they know how to really walk that tightrope. And now finally, Victor level five, you know, and this is everything that we've discussed, all the differing levels, the, the basics, the, the matchup understanding, the fundamentals, the wing con assessment. And this is where creativity and next level skirmishing and team fighting really comes into play. And this is something that's really difficult to really exemplify. You can't really show one example and be like, this is grandmaster level gameplay and this is master tier level gameplay because the difference between, like I said, a challenger victor and a master victor isn't their highs, it's their lows. A, a challenger victor will never, it's it, it's like, if, if I actually draw it here, right? Their bell curve, right? Their bell curve, if we draw a bell curve here, their level of play on the bottom end is always only at like a 700 LP level, but their peak is, you know, obviously at like a 1200 LP level. Whereas a master tier player, they have the high highs. They have like the maybe 1K LP at the top end of the, the, bell, the bell curve, but at the bottom end of the bell curve, there goes down to like D2 or D4, such that they have this massive... Um, I guess, large variety of, of, of level of play. They can play at all these differing breakpoints and they'll make very poor quality decisions randomly and the lack of consistency leads to their rank. That's why they're in Master Tier or, or Low GM and not Challenger a lot of the time. But at this stage, the differences are very small. It's often less about Victor and it's very similar to the last level and more about how the player uses Victor as a tool to win the game. These Victor players are very good at adapting their role inside of the game, whether it's like deciding to dive aside or trade sides of the map, they know what is worth it in reference to the win conditions. They know when it's worth it to sacrifice their own resources for the greater good. They know when it's not good to do that. And yes, it should go without being said, but team fighting and skirmishing is also taken to the next level, you know, and that's where, you know, both uh, e accuracy, tethering, threat assessment, positioning, target selection, all that stuff is just bumped up to that, ne that next level as well. Um, again, very difficult to articulate. And remember, guys, every single rank that you jump, every single time you're climbing the solo queue ladder, being able to execute upon the fundamentals get a little bit harder. Gets that little bit harder. Gets that little bit harder. Jungle tracking is harder. Dealing with faster plays, more aggressive opponents is harder because your mental stack is now occupied. Supports are now more aware of the kill threat they have on you in mid, so they're going to roam and find great windows to kill you mid. It's doing these things consistently, which really pays dividends, guys. And the last point here, when watching really great Victor players, you know, don't get... Don't fall into the trap of being like, oh, yes, that's amazing, that's cool, and just like just being in awe of what they're doing. Ask yourself, why are they making the choices they are making? Why are they choosing to split the map here? Why are they, they they're choosing why are they choosing to say no to that skirmish and stay mid here for that item or whatever, or those plates? You know, so that's a that's a really great frame of reference when watching these VODs, guys. So what we'll do, we'll jump into a quick summary um, and recap some of these learnings here, guys. So for a quick summary and really distilling the key points within this video, the first one that I really noticed while making this video was that you can't really separate champion specifics from game fundamentals when climbing. They go hand in hand. One's ability to execute their champion and have good quality micro and matchup understanding is directly connected with really good quality game fundamentals, like their leaning, their warding, their jungle tracking, their threat assessment, their reset the tempo. It's all directly, they go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other, right? There's no such thing as a grandmaster player with poor fundamentals. It doesn't make sense. The next one being people disrespect the importance of muscle memory and the ability to consistently execute in climbing. They, they think that climbing is just learning new massive concepts. They think it's it's like some crazy outplays that they do that make the difference. No, it's the consistency, it's the muscle memory, it's the execution. They automatically assume 
as well that a master tier player, if a master tier victor were to go into gold, they would 360 no scope everyone with with their with a blindfold on and, and using their pinky only or something. You know, in reality, what a master what a master victor player would do in gold is that it would systematically de destroy and destruct the enemy laner without any counterplay. It's like they're just going to hit every E. They're going to slow build. They're going to force the enemy back to base. They might solo kill. They're never going to die to a gank. They're going to get good resets, and then they're going to one v nine in the mid game. That's in reality what's going to happen. You can only do what the champion allows. And remember, climbing is less about the quality of the plays you make and more about the quality of the mistakes you make. So I hope you all can take something away from this video. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Hopefully it gives you something to think about on your climb. Cheers. Thanks for watching.